exciting thing about fashion for designers even is that you have a story that you're trying to tell, but then it's fun to take it outside of that and to develop the story further. We never really cared if we're making a fashion film, yeah. you know, like we... I mean, we wouldn't have to put our clothes in it. We could put it in the last scene and we'd be happy, you know? It's an artistic expression, so it's not necessarily about just, here's this collection we did and we want to um, show it, you know, and only have it exist in this season and then we move on next season and it's something else. About 2010, we were doing things together and we met to do a video and I think we sat down for 15 minutes and talked about it should be a horror thing and yeah, let's do that. It's stories coming from a group of people, so that's really the connection with all of them. It's things that we're all fascinated by and that we consistently talk about. I feel like the thing that we hadn't done was a proper narrative film with dialogue and all these things that we love about film, and so we wanted to do that with this one. Princess, the castles are that way. It's interesting that it's always been a female character. I don't think that was by choice or even by saying you wanted, you had these clothes to wear. They are all on these quests, and I think that if you watch each of them, you would see these internal struggles happening. And this one is a little bit more physical, but I think it's still there. In a way, it's kind of like trying new things. Like, what do we do next? What can we do next? What haven't we done? And, mm -hmm. and that's so much fun. We did a collection based on fantasy role-playing games, and it was that simple. You wanted to tell the story of a hero. And the collection was kind of this idea about you live your life in the everyday, but then in this other world in your mind, your imagination, that you get to live out this fantasy of kind of being this hero. And I think that the arc that you can play with that was really interesting. But I think too what's interesting about fantasy is it lets the person involving themselves in it really create their own dialogue and their own kind of like symbolism. So you know we found when we were building clothing, we're like, okay, well this series of colors is going to mean this for us. Sydney Williams is the local LA girl who just graduated from high school that we had known about and we thought was really interesting. And, you know, she doesn't have any acting experience and she's not really a model in you know, a professional kind of way. She's just a really cool kid. like, well, let's do this fun kind of homage to, like, the king of this world. Who else would you imagine in this, in this role? Everything that the girl was experiencing is channeled through her own kind of reality. She's a gamer, so of course when she goes outside, she's going to confront some evil force. And you don't know if it was real or if it actually happened or if that was what she imagined. Here it comes. It's great to have A52 on this to kind of make those ideas that we talked about come to life. It's nice to bring a little magic into the visual effects because so much of the work that we do is often just based on <clears throat> making something photoreal and integrating it into photography and just making it invisible almost. So with the idea of magical realism, we're able to kind of bring some more showy effects into the mix. To me, I think it really helps to kind of take you out of your real world and open yourself up to unexpected things happening. I was working mostly on the effect of the Red Rider vanishing and, and appearing, materializing. So we're doing some dust effects and sort of like magical particle effects. The fairy was given a look and given wings, almost um, like a transparency projected look. Todd was really clear that he wanted this to, to be modern, but 
in a, in a sort of 80s video game, kids that grew up in that era, like understanding what those effects would be and thinking that that was cool. So that's sort of where we got the inspiration for a lot of the effects that came through the film. The idea now that you can make something and you can distribute it on the internet and a lot of people will see it online is amazing. New art forms and new spaces allow for different ways of seeing or communicating and this is something that like we experience all throughout time. Any medium you have that can allow you, for you to communicate with more people is kind of a vitally important medium and it's just how you use it. So you want people to see it and have an interaction or a reaction. A lot of times you work with someone and you're like, God, they're not understanding me. This is like, you could have one conversation with Todd and you probably wouldn't have to talk for another two weeks. It's that simple. Yeah. It's like when I talk to Kate about something, the process is really straightforward and we know exactly what everyone wants. Uh -oh. No, 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 it's just a cleric. It's just a cleric. It's, just a cleric. it's, just a cleric. it's only anything else. Yeah. 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 It was just fun. It's like making things with your friends, which I think because we have the same kind of sensibilities and we our references are pretty much the same, that everything about my collaboration with them is so kind of effortless. I've never had that with anybody where it's just so easy. Yeah.